Hello, everyone, and welcome to this continuation of the hand calculation series. Today, we are going to be discussing the percent depth dose. So now we can start with a very basic definition of what the percent depth dose actually is, or PDD for short. And in essence, the PDD is just a ratio of doses. One is taken at depth D, and one is taken at depth D naught. And you can see that the on the right here, uh, kind of the geometry that we're dealing with. So the PDD is a function of your SSD, which is your source to surface distance. It's a function of R, which is the field size defined at the surface of the phantom. And it's also a function of D, which is the depth uh, of the point that you're looking at in the phantom. D naught is a normalization depth, which basically sets where your PDD is equal to 100. Uh, and in most cases, at most institutions, D naught is taken to be the depth of maximum dose, or D max. So what does the PDD actually represent? Well, it's the percent depth dose, so it represents the dose distribution along the central axis with respect to depth and decreases with depth beyond the depth of D max. And the things that are included in the measurement of the PDD is inverse square fall off, attenuation, and scatter. Because the SSD is fixed and you're moving your ion chamber as you're measuring that PDD. The PDD also starts with something known as the buildup region, where the dose kind of builds up to a maximum and then begins to decay afterward due to inverse square fall off and also attenuation within the medium. So here's an example of that buildup region I was talking about. On the left, you can see the absorbed dose plotted against depth along with the kinetic energy released per unit mass, or KERMA. And on the right, you can see the kind of the geometry that we're plotting. So we're taking measurements at some fixed S SSD with some fixed field size at the surface. And what we're actually plotting here is the absorbed dose along that dashed line that's kind of splitting the phantom there. And you can see that the KERMA reaches a maximum right at the surface, but the absorbed dose doesn't reach a maximum until a little bit further downstream. And what's happening here is that the photon beam is interacting at the surface and giving energy to those charged particles, and that's why the KERMA is a maximum at the surface. But what's happening is that those secondary charged particles are actually carrying their energy further downstream and depositing most of their dose downstream. So the dose is actually building up, hence the term the buildup region. And that's why we see this, uh, the PDD has this shape, at least at the beginning, until it reaches the depth of maximum dose. And we can actually exploit this buildup region when we do treatment planning for our patients. Since the dose is lowered in this buildup region, we actually get something known as the skin sparing effect. Since the dose is lower, the skin actually gets a lower dose uh, when you use a photon beam because of this effect. So that is advantageous in lowering our skin dose, and we can benefit our patients uh, just you know using the buildup effect. Another thing to note is that the buildup region is a region of disequilibrium. So the hand calculation formalism is not valid here. The hand calc formalism is only valid in regions of equilibrium conditions, which is beyond the depth of Dmax. Now we can talk about some of the dependencies of the percent depth dose. So the PDD actually depends on a number of things. One of those things is the beam energy. So the PDD actually increases with increased beam energy because you have a higher beam quality, it's more penetrable, and it deposits more dose uh, deeper in the patient. It also increases with increased field size because you're actually irradiating more of the phantom and you're getting more of a scatter contribution, which increases your dose. Uh, you also get a PDD increased with uh, increased SSD because the inverse square is less of an effect when your SSD is larger, and we'll see an example of that later. And it also decreases beyond depth of Dmax, which is very intuitive because of inverse square and also attenuation. Here's an example of the energy dependence of the PDD. So here you see a PDD for 6x and 15x energies, and you can see that the 15x PDD is higher uh, than the 6x PDD, and also that the buildup region is longer. So the depth of Dmax for a 15x beam is actually deeper in a patient than 6x beam and therefore it has a greater skin sparing capabilities. And here's the field size dependence of the PDD. So on the y-axis we have the percent depth dose at 10 centimeters and on the x-axis we have the field size. So you can see that the PDD actually increases for increased field size up into you know 
up in these larger field sizes, it kind of starts to flatten out, but generally it tends to increase. And here is a plot that shows the dependence on SSD. So you can see the PDD for uh, three different SSDs. One's at 100, one's at 80, and one's at 120. And you can see that the extended SSD is actually higher and the decreased SSD is actually lower. Uh, the effect is pretty small, like the PDD is not shifting very much here, but there is a noticeable shift in the PDD as a function uh, of SSD. And thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.